Hello, everyone. Ming Lava. This is Kenneth Wong, a Burmese American writer, translator, and language instructor. In today's lesson, I'd like to show you how to make conditional statements. So, what are conditional statements? For example, if it is sunny tomorrow, I'll go shopping. If he comes to the party, I won't go. If it is hot, open the window. That sort of statements. In other words, if condition A occurs, then B will happen. Let's get right to it. Now let's try to come up with two sentences: one that sets up the condition, one that expresses what will follow. Take a look at this sentence: Manepian ne ta me. Manepian ne ta me. It'll be sunny tomorrow. I'll break it down for you. Manepian is tomorrow. Ne ta is sunny. This is slightly different from ne pu, by the way, which could also be translated as sunny in English, but the connotation is rather negative. Ne ta suggests pleasantly sunny, warm, bright, but not terribly hot and stifling. But ne pu usually suggests hot to the degree that it discourages people from going out. Me, the final particle, is rather meaningless in itself, but grammatically important. This shows an event that hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. It's a future indicator sentence and particle. So, if we put it all together, you get it will be sunny tomorrow. Now let's take a look at another statement. Chenoru payatwame. Chenoru payatwame. We'll go to the pagoda. I'll break it down for you. Chenoru. Is the plural form of the male pronoun for I. In other words, this is how a man would say "we" in the polite form. If you're a woman, it's different. You'll need to use the female plural version, and that's "chamado." Chamado. Paya is pagoda. Thwa is the verb to go. And this sentence also ends in "me," the future sentence and particle. Put it all together. Chenoru paya thwa me. We'll go to the pagoda. Now let's take a look at both sentences together. Manepian ne thame. It'll be sunny tomorrow. Chenoru paya thame. We'll go to the pagoda. So the question is, how would you join these two sentences so that you can say, if it'll be sunny tomorrow, we'll go to the pagoda. It's easier than you might think. First, you need to know the Burmese version of if, the Burmese conditional particle, and that is. Yeah. Let me pronounce it for you again. It's yeah. So what you do is you take out the sentence and particle in the first sentence, me, then replace it with the particle yeah, the if particle, the conditional particle. So you end up with manepian ne ta yeah, manepian ne ta yeah. That's how you say if it's sunny tomorrow. This sets up the condition in your statement. What about the rest? The rest you just repeat it exactly as it is. So you can say manepian ne ta yen chenoru paya thame. If it's sunny tomorrow, we'll go to the pagoda. Now let's try another example, shall we? Aite. That means it's humid. It's hot. Ai is the word to describe how you would feel on the third floor of a Rangoon apartment in the middle of April or May at the peak of the hot season. There is the affirmative sentence end for the present tense. Unlike the other statement, we're now talking about the present condition. So instead of the future sentence end me, you end up with de. Put it all together. I de. That's how you say it's humid. It's hot. Here's the next statement. But him bao pun lai. But him bao pun lai. Let me break it down for you. But him bao is the word for window. Pun. Is the verb to open, light? Well, that's a casual command particle. So if you say verb plus light, that means do that action in that verb. So put light. It means go ahead and open that. What do I mean by casual command particle? I mean it's okay to speak like that to a friend or someone of your same age, but not a good idea if you're talking to your teacher, your boss, your grandfather. For people like those, you should use a polite command particle, not a casual particle. So, for example, you should say, "But him ba pun lai ba, but him ba pun lai ba." Now that sounds a lot more formal, as if you're suggesting or requesting rather than nudging somebody to do something immediately right now for you. At any rate, we now have two sentences: "I de, I de, it's hot, it's humid," and "But him ba pun lai." But in about pun like, open the window.
Now let's try to join those two sentences so that it becomes if it is hot, open the window. Just like before, what you do is you take out the sentence in particle de and replace it with the conditional particle je. So you end up with ai je, ai je. That's how you say if it is hot, if it is humid. The rest you just repeat it exactly as it is. So ai je, but in bao pun lai. Ai je, but in bao pun lai. If it is hot, if it is humid, open the window. The key is to remember to drop the sentence and particle in your if clause and replace it with the conditional particle jen. You cannot say, for example, I de jen. And you cannot say, You have to say, I jen to say, if it is hot or humid. Or you have to say, to say, if it'll be sunny tomorrow. Now, let me give you two new words. The word for cold or chilly is cha, cha. And the word to close something is bei, bei is the opposite of pun, which is to open, bei is to close. With those two new words, do you think you can figure out how to say, if it's chilly, close the window? I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll give you some time while I drink coffee, okay? Try to figure this out. All right, some of you may have already figured this out. I think it's fairly straightforward. The way to say that is If it is chilly, close the window. Now, how would you deal with negative sentences in this structure? Well, let's try joining these two statements. That means doesn't read. The subject is implied. It can be you, it can be me, it can be anybody, but it's not explicitly stated. Sapa is to read. Samapa is the negative version of that, so it means doesn't read. Pu is the negative sentence end. In Burmese, a negative sentence requires a negative sentence end. You cannot end this sentence as Samapa de. You have to end it as Samapa pu with a negative sentence end. Bahututa mashi bu. Bahututa mashi bu. Bahututa is general knowledge. Mashi is the negative form of the verb shi, to have, to possess, to exist. So, mashi means doesn't have, doesn't possess, doesn't exist. It means doesn't have general knowledge. Someone, you, me, or anybody doesn't have general knowledge. Now, let's join these two sentences to say, if you don't read, you are not knowledgeable, you are not informed. It may seem complicated, but you follow the same rules and the formula before. You'll be fine. First, you replace the sentence and particle. In this case, it happens to be a negative sentence and particle, pu. But that doesn't really matter. You replace it with the conditional particle, jian. So you end up with, samapai jian. Samapai jian. That's how you say, if you don't read, or if someone doesn't read. That's how you say, if you don't read, you're not knowledgeable, you're not informed. In this case, the word you is not explicitly stated in your statements, but implied. You can use these subjectless sentences, as it were, to make general observations about something that holds true for anybody. So the sentence is quite similar to how, in English, you might say, if one doesn't read, one will be uninformed. Okay, the nature of language is, if you don't practice, you won't get better. So i leave you now for experiment and practice with conditional structures that you have just learned. This is Kenneth Wong saying, if you like this lesson, please watch the other lessons and subscribe to my channel. See you later. Nau ma